Hey everyone, let's take a look at what's new in Blackout 2.3.6. I did not do a release notes video for 2.3.5, so I'll be including that in this video, but to get the latest updates, you wanna be on 2.3.6. This update includes some awesome new changes into live plot and the workflow for multi-cell fixtures there, so I'm super excited to jump in and show you what's new. And just for reference, I have eight Vortex 8s patched in mode 35, which is their multi-cell mode. Okay, so starting off, I'm gonna start with an empty live plot. I'll go up here into edit mode, and then we'll type in our first vortex, which is 801. And I'll grab a square, and I'll drop that in. I'm now gonna get out of plus mode and size this accordingly. I'm gonna to toggle on my command key down here to be able to change the aspect ratio to more fit a vortex. Now, I can just duplicate this, let's say eight times. I'm going to select all of these and hit this icon up here to stack them in a grid. I'll change the columns to four and hit OK. Now you can see these are all fixtures 801 and I want them to be all our vortexes. I can click this brand new targeting symbol and just click on the vortexes and you'll notice here it changes incrementally. So whatever vortex I click will switch to whatever that number is. This makes retargeting so fast. Now we've also done this with cells, so I'll show you some workflows regarding cells. If I click on the unit, I can hit this three line hamburger menu and add cells and we'll do to the right. I'm gonna zoom out, I'll select all the cells and come up here, select grid, and I'll change that to columns of four. I'm also gonna come to properties here and delete these text fields just so they're out of the way and nice and clean. Now, instead of having to do this for every vortex, I can just duplicate. So I'm going to grab these, duplicate, grab that, duplicate. Now, if I select this whole thing and go into my targets menu up here and select 802, watch what happens. All the cells correctly change to match their head cell. It's awesome. I can also use my targeting tool. So if I come here, change this to 803. If I have 803 selected here, I can also hit the cell button. And as I tap on each fixture, just like before, we get the correct cells. So as you can see, this massively improves the workflow with live plot and multi-instance fixtures. LivePlot also got an upgrade to improve its battery performance, so hopefully you'll see that for yourself. And let's jump right in to another of my new favorite features, our brand new link status menu. So if we come up here to link status, you'll see we get a full page pop-up, and here we have all our old options, as well as a new output method menu that lets you pick between preferring wired or wireless connections. In our new connect device menu, you'll see we now have the option to learn OSC. Here you'll find all your configuration settings and you can click this link up here and if you're connected to Wi-Fi, it will take you to documentation that shows all the OSC commands available. This is extremely powerful. OSC is a wonderful protocol. It's much higher bit than MIDI and you can do some really, really exciting things with it. Inside MIDI Learn, you'll see MIDI Learn itself is now MIDI Learnable. Super helpful if you want to change your mappings quickly on the fly. And one of my other favorites, Disable DMX Output is now MIDI learnable. I use this all the time to program in blind so I don't affect our static output. And now you can put it on your MIDI board or keyboard so it's accessible with a tap of a button. On and off now work with sequences. So I have sequence one playing right now. If I double tap on here to get off, look changes to sequence and I can do off sequence one, enter and you'll see it turns off. I can also turn on the sequence by going on, sequence, one, enter, and you'll see it turns on. We fixed fixture control, so you use the handle now only to make your adjustments. A lot of users had trouble when they were scrolling. They would accidentally hit in the middle of a slider and start strobing a light when they were just trying to scroll to get to colors. We also have a ton of fixes in the new updates, so let me go through some of the highlights. The sidebar UI has been fixed, so whatever look you're in, in the sidebar will be correctly displayed in gray. Favorites inside the fixture database are completely fixed. You can now clear out a manufacturer, just like so, by hitting the X. Or if you select a manufacturer on the side, you can click it again to deselect. 
And one of my favorite quality of life improvements, just like MIDI, connection to keyboard is now remembered if you close and come back. So check out the release notes for a full overview of all the bug fixes, but that's an overview of all the great quality of life improvements in this new update. Make sure you update to the latest blackout and happy programming.